Hey everybody, welcome to the garden. I hope you're having a great day. Shout out to the lemon and lime lovers and everybody in between. It's time for a market recap. And if you're interested in any of the services I provide, please check out the links in the description below for the Patreon and Discord. Okay, so uh, we have done we haven't done a recap in quite a while. That's namely because not much has really changed, but we are coming to a very pivotal day. So I want to talk about that. And this video is really going to answer, you know, try and answer the question, what is the Fed going to do? And uh, that's just my opinion. So we'll see if I end up being right or wrong. It doesn't really matter. And then after that, we'll take a look at the charts, of course. If you don't want to hear about what I think the Fed's going to do, um, which I would hope you want to because it's going to affect you. Uh, but if you don't, check out the timestamps in the description below to skip ahead to whatever you want to hear. All right. So starting off, we are going to get FOMC, the U.S. interest rate decision as well, on the 20th. So that is two days from now, Wednesday, 2023. So uh, what's going to happen? I personally think that the Fed is likely going to raise one more time. Okay, so I do think we're going to get one more quarter basis point raise, and then that is it. Now, of course, I could be wrong. Who knows? But I am leaning more towards 0.25 being uh, a 0.25 uh, raise. Uh, and then after that, we're probably going to see a halting of raising rates. Now, why do I think this? Well, the data that has been coming out over these last these last couple of weeks has kind of implied that the destruction in the jobs market is happening, but the rate at which it is happening seems to be fairly slow, at least to what the Fed have been wanting. Right. So they look like they they have been trying to get a much steeper quicker fall in in, in, in in employment uh but it hasn't really taken hold but i think they're probably thinking one more rate hike will likely kick them off the cliff and we'll start to see the pain in the jobs market that the fed has been targeting in hopes obviously of bringing them down to that two percent inflation target will it happen will they hit it that remains to be seen but I do think that is their thinking that they need one more final push to get the jobs market into a weakened state that they've been wanting to then get enough fuel to halt raising rates and then eventually start to ease going into next year. And yes, I do think in sometime next year, I'm leaning more towards Q2 to Q3, uh, we're gonna get our first sign of official easing where we where we don't raise rates where we're going to lower rates uh and uh we're probably going to see a major market rally during that time and then the show will end in 2025 that's at least my thinking for now well, you know again i'm very fluid we'll see if i'm right or wrong but this coming meeting i'm expecting another basis point raise but let's say we don't raise uh, a quarter basis point let's say they actually halt well if that happens expect a major rally on risk on assets namely crypto and very uh speculative stocks okay and tech will start to boom as well now this is a possibility there have been uh data sets that have kind of leaned towards you know bank of Eng uh bank of uh, uh of england uh all, all these banks kind of slowing down we were seeing the bank of japan already start to ease and i've told many members that the bank of japan is in the future right if you want to see uh, central bank policy into the future look at whatever the bank of japan is doing and they're usually anywhere from one to three quarters in the future right and they've already started to ease so there's plenty of i would say precedents that the Fed will stop raising rates here and they'll halt. Now, I don't believe they'll ease at all. I don't think easing is coming anytime soon, but there is a world where they halt raising rates here. I don't lean towards this. I'm leaning towards they do one more raise, but if that does happen where they halt, expect a major run to the upside. And uh, again, we don't have much time to wait, just two more days. <laughs> so uh, in my opinion, uh, I'm positioned for them to raise one more time. That should lead to some selling. Uh, but if uh, the data is fairly expected, then it won't lead to anything too major. But if they do, you know, have a lot more data that is contrarian to the idea that they're going to slow down anytime soon, then we will we will see a major major sell off into Wednesday, and this week will probably turn to be a very red bloody week. All right, so that's it for the Fed talk. 
Again, if you have any questions about that, leave a comment down below. I love reading your comments. And of course, if you haven't joined that Discord, you can contact me there. You can ask me all the questions you want there. I'm fairly active. Um, so again, you'll find the link in the description for that in the description. <laughs> all right, so let's take a look at the Dixie chart. So last time we looked at Dixie, I had been saying, you know, watch for this daily downtrend to eventually be broken if we come back and kind of, you know, touch on this zone. And we didn't actually tap deep into this we got very close we wicked into this general area into my noodle here which is this bullish fair value gap right around here but we found the fuel broke through came back held the daily downtrend line and then have so far had continuation up now do i think we're going to go higher yes i do think we're eventually going to make our way up to the 108 109 but in the short term i am looking for a pullback all the way back down to about 103.65 and then potentially even a pullback back down to 102.58 that does not mean it is over for the rally on dollar i do think that there's going to be plenty of room to the upside going back up to 108 109 and then eventually honestly higher but in the coming future in the coming days look for a pullback going to at least 104 to 103.65 and then a move potentially even lower depending on the context of this move how it moves down here to potentially even lower towards about 102.3 102 0.25 okay but overall bullish on the dollar short term i'm looking for some downside which is good for risk on assets if you're looking for bullish momentum there all right let's take a quick look at the u.s market so let's take a look at the dow sp and nasdaq so the dow has been overall doing fairly as expected so we came to this uh to this major level at 35,516 took the buy side liquidity there we even got we got fairly close to the red zone here but we didn't get there I am looking for another pop up here, and that's also you know in tandem with a dollar drop, right? So we're looking at that short term drop for a short term pop on the on the on the Dow. So until these low pivots right here get taken out, and really this pivot right here, until this gets taken out, you can't get super bearish on the Dow. Now you can't be super bullish either because I mean we we broke structure here, but we have not broken this rising structure until this pivot right here. Let me get that doodle. Yeah, there we go. The little brush. This pivot right here gets namely taken out. And then ultimately this one as well. Okay. This is the major one. This is a pretty important one. And this is a pretty minor pivot, right? So that this if these get taken out, specifically this one will open the door for this pivot to really get taken out. If this gets taken out, this is still not under threat. But this one, if this holds, it's very bullish. Now, do I think it's going to hold? I lean towards it holding in the short term, hence the doodle you see, but I do not believe that means we're going to go up and take the all-time highs. It just means I'm looking for another macro lower high to then potentially to lower lows. But my opinion may change depending on what happens on Wednesday. That's how important this Fed meeting is, this FOMC is. Okay, This data is going to define the rest of this year and maybe even Q1 of next year. So it's very important you take it seriously. Now, do I think we're going to get up to here? Yes, I do think that we may see a slight uh, swing failure pattern here where we actually make another run up back to 35,866 and then look for a failure there. I, I would look for exhaustion here, whether that's a quick move up like that or whether we grind up higher, slowly grinding kind of like this and then finally break down to go further lower. Either way, I do not foresee a clean break of this pivot and then rapid continuation. For that to happen, we're going to have to get some really, really dovish news coming out of the Fed, okay? But this is what I'm seeing in the short term and then eventually through the medium term, a break back down to these levels here. And again, we might not even come all the way up to the red line. We might just come back to the kind of the consolidation here, make a little double top area and then break lower again. All right, next is the S&P, and S&P has followed so far uh, this structure here. We have the one-week bearish order block that's been respected. We tapped right back into it, and now we're making our way lower. Now, does this mean we're going to come straight down here? Of course not, okay? I do think that this pivot here is very likely to get taken out. It's a very easy sell side uh, level to get uh, targeted, and then ultimately make our way back to this consolidation here at about 4 4040 4050 uh that general area here is where i'm looking for a price to get to uh, but before then we can see another move back into the the, the order block uh especially if we're going to have short-term bearishness on the dollar we might get some uh some 
some strength in the S&P, but I would be very skeptical of seeing this actually break through, um, at least decisively. You might get a, a nice little sweep up here and then break down. Again, for me to be convinced of this, I'm going to need to see Fed policy uh, really, really change, or at least show real significant steps to change, okay? But as of right now, uh, we're going to follow what we have here. Next is NASDAQ. So let's take a quick look at NASDAQ came to the area bounced up where i was looking forward to do and so far has been respecting this bearish uh this bearish fair value gap zone uh, again same thing very similar structure coming to take the sell side under this pivot and then break lower into the orange zone and then maybe even eventually come back to this consolidation these high pivots here and uh, try and challenge those lows ultimately i don't see that breaking immediately i'd look for a pretty sizable bounce from that area to then make another macro lower high which would then eventually if we're going into a bear market going to next year which is possible uh then we break down further i'm leaning more towards 2025 uh being the real bear market but 2024 could definitely be a year of not bullishness and mostly inactivity you know very low volatility and there's a lot a lot of people very very smart people out there who actually agree that next year is going to be very slow growth so we may end up having a very inactive year going into 2024, but we'll see. We'll see. The, to me, the charts are not indicating that. To me, they're indicating, uh, you know, a pretty a pretty sizable move next year, and I'm le leaning more towards upside um, after a pretty sizable drop. And then 2025 will be a, a the bigger drop going into uh, a bear market. All right. Uh, next is oil. So let's take a quick look at oil. So if you've been following me for any time, right? So if you've been <laughs> if you've been following me for any time, you know I've been bullish on oil for a long time all throughout here you know i was saying buy oil get an oil and we had an oil position i closed that out and uh you know we took our profits off of that and I'm, again i'm not nothing's changed i'm just swing trading it so i'm looking for when price wants to slow down give us a nice pullback i'm going to do the same thing you know i'm going to get in long again and then we're going to take the next leg up but overall like th this has been an incredibly bullish chart it's going to continue to be bullish because this is just the beginning right the daily is bullish weekly is bullish monthly is bullish this is just the start now are we overextended absolutely like are, are are we are we gonna top out here and then break the lows absolutely not that's so unlikely again anything's possible but that is extremely unlikely what's more likely is we've topped out here for a while you know we may come a bit higher to take the weekly uh, buy side liquidity here at 94 94 dollars a barrel but we want to see a drop probably back into this zone here about 76 bucks so this is one of the reasons why i end up closing out my long on USO because I'm I'm very comfortable with the profit I made off of it and I'm looking at this as I'm gonna trade the bias on oil to the upside this whole way up I'm gonna make so much money on oil so I'm gonna wait for the pullback coming into this level be very patient and then we're gonna go long again and you know what's gonna happen if oil continues to do what's doing you know fundamentally we're gonna get these exports being cut more and more and more out of Saudi Arabia we're gonna get more hostility coming out of Russia and China Oil's gonna go up guys well, it's going to go up and i've been saying it for months and i've been trying to prepare you you know you know, be prepared for your cost of living to go up higher and be as conservative as you can be as wise as you can and just trust the chart trust the chart man evs electric vehicles all that stuff they may work out great okay but the chart is telling you the big money is on uh, the bullish side of oil oil is bullish as heck all right I'm trying not to curse, but I would if I. It is bullish. All right, so, all right, so be very careful getting too negative on oil. But we can see that short-term pullback coming into oil, kind of like we're seeing here. But even with this doodle, all right, this is the most bullish path possible. That we come back into the 80s, like 85, and hold that, and then go up higher. Of course, it's possible. But I'm looking for a, a deeper pullback. I do think we can see move back down to the 70s, 76, 75. But then once we get into that, be on the lookout for another leg up. All right, all right. Let's take a quick look at gold and silver, and then uh, and then we'll go into Bitcoin. Okay, so gold and silver. So gold, gold has been pretty interesting. Got very close to my doodle here now it did tap into it you see it wicked right into it but again this is just a doodle it's just like just a guide it doesn't it's not exact but the idea was that it would make a lower high to this this high here and that's what we got so far but notice how we're making this higher low 
from this low here. So that's implying we're going into a very nice squeeze here that has a bullish bias, okay? It's a bullish bias right now because it's descending, it's grinding lower. So we could see a move to the upside. Now, this does not mean we're taking out the highs, okay? The reason why we're seeing this is because dollar is also showing a bearish bias right now. So it's a little bit weaker. But if the dollar breaks down and makes a higher low, what could we expect dollar to do if the dollar, sorry, what can we expect gold to do if dollar is going to have moves higher up to the 108, 109? In that scenario, you would have gold break up as the dollar breaks down to make the higher low. Gold will make a lower high and then dollar will have upside continuation and then gold will have downside continuation, okay? So it's again, inverse. Now they're not one to one, but that general sentiment is gonna be inversed. So just be prepared that gold is looking short-term bullish, but if dollar starts to show signs of that higher low we're looking for to then ultimately make its way up to the 108s, 109s, gold will feel that pressure. And the first place you wanna look for that pressure to start hitting is around this area of about 2000, 19, 1998. The, the places I've been saying, or right, go back into the previous recaps, I've been saying, watch for those areas. You can see a return to that. But once we get there, and if the dollar's validating a potential bullish higher low, be very careful looking for major upside to take out the all-time high on gold, all right? And if that does end up playing out and we do break down, the first major area is gonna be sub these lows right here. So around 1800 to about 1760, 1750, so down here, all right? All right, next is silver. Okay, so silver's been just pretty much consolidating here. Okay, it's been, ugh, it's been just going crazy in here. <laughs> but as you can see, it's been really respecting the, the you know, the, the, this bearish fair value gap and also this fair value gap here that's pretty much been filled, but it's, it's playing out as a demand zone, right? So we're just holding this area. And if you notice closely, it is squeezing, right? It is slightly squeezing. And this will ultimately follow gold okay so if we continue higher prepare for a breakdown and something like this and then eventually if the dollar has the continuation to the to the upside you will see this breakdown i do not expect silver to break up heavily even if gold breaks up um you know beyond that descending structure we just looked at i don't expect silver to be breaking beyond 26 or anything like that 26 one or whatever so we want to be very careful also with silver getting too ahead of ourselves i would look for a move back up to 24 5 maybe even 25 but be very very skeptical of anything higher unless unless dollar starts to weaken out much more than expected and we're also getting signs of a fundamental shift coming out of the fed all right let's take a quick look at bitcoin here so as you know, if you've been following me for a while, we've been long Bitcoin for quite some time. Let me, uh, if I could find, I think it's this one index. Let me sure I get the right one. So we're sitting, nope, the wrong one. Sorry about that. It's back testing on that. Let's do this one, crypto. I think it's this one. It's not this one. Okay. So let's go back and go to the watch list. Sorry about that, guys. Here we go. It's one of these. <laughs> one of these all right so here we are so as you know we're, we're fairly flat on this on on this position at the moment but again it's a one percent position it's very very small but as of right now what is bitcoin doing so currently we've been holding this daily bullish fair value gap and you can see all this activity here the wicking the the rejections to drop the rejections to rise so it's been very choppy in this whole area Okay, now what I would say here is be very skeptical of any major move. However, I would still be skeptical of major downside. Now I am looking for potentially a move down here to this to this zone here, back under this low pivot, back towards this key zone, about 24,000. Uh, and then ultimately trying to get back to 23,000 and 22,522. So this generator, this whole daily bullish for value gap as long as this low holds, okay? As long as this holds, this up, this upward structure survives, okay? So as long as this holds, it will survive. If this should be taken out, okay? So should we do this? Take out that low. Expect a nice move up and then a major continuation lower, okay? So in this scenario, if you're in the trade service, you know, 
uh, you know, I have plans to do add-ons. We're, we're not heavily in the markets right now. Uh, we have positions, but there's plenty of powder on the side. That By the time we get down to this area here, our add-ons will eventually lead us towards, I have it mapped out to be around 23, uh, sorry, 22, eight ish. So around this area. So on that protect that uh, expected most uh, probabilistic bounce from this area, uh, we probably will take our profit and run from there. Maybe even flip short should that happen. So this would be the, the, the path of we're breaking under 15 K and we're going into new lows. Now, if we have a bullish path, which this will definitely play out if the Fed uh, has data that implies a slowdown uh, that's coming, or if for whatever reason they actually do slow down this 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 whole this this actual FOMC, um, then we'll be looking for a very decisive move back towards about twenty nine thousand. Okay, a move back towards this area here, back towards this consolidation, and then a pullback from there. Okay, you might even take out the slide high, so like a spike above 30,000. But I only see that happening if, again, the Fed either halts. And if they actually were to halt, we would actually see much higher. But if they were to, let's just say, raise 0.25, and then the, the, the wording, you know, Jerome Powell speaks or their data, you know, they imply, hey, you know, this is probably the last time we're going into restriction, all these things. Like if they start implying that we're not going to raise rates anymore, um, then you, 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 you may see some buying that might lead to a move back to 30, 29, 8, around that area. Uh, and then we'll have to see how the price action looks, but I would expect a pretty sizable pullback from there. Um, and then, you know, depending on the price action looks, it may be a bullish pullback or it may just be that last gasp of air. Uh, for Bitcoin to then break down lower. Again, we'll have to wait and see. So far though, this price action is just implying continuation of trading sideways here, okay? This is not implying we're breaking out here. It is more implying we're gonna be doing something more akin to this, right? And if we have something like this, where we do squeeze and we do kind of grind lower, that's gonna have a more a more like likely bullish outcome than if we were to do something akin to this which you know you don't really want to see where it does something like this because then you're going to have a more uh, you know likely outcome of a bearish rejection and then continuation lower okay so that's about it for now so pretty much kind of hold your hands wait uh for wednesday see how it all develops and uh you know the fed's really going to define uh the rest of the year quite a bit uh, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. So if you want to be in a community while that happens, you want to kind of learn some stuff, make sure to join the Discord. You'll find the you'll find the link in the description below. And obviously, if you're interested in any of the services, whether it's a tutoring service, swing trade service, or the day trade room, uh, we day trade in that room every day, Monday through Friday, about 8 a.m. Eastern to about, uh, sometimes we go to just to 11, but a lot of times we'll go way past that to like 12.30 p.m. to sometimes even like 1.30, 2.30 p.m. So pretty much like all day we'll be trading. So if you're interested in that, you'll find the details of the, to that uh, service and the Patreon and the Discord, both links in the description. All right, guys, have a great one. And always remember, be patient, be vigilant, and be nimble. I love you guys. Take care. Bye.